Howdy folks, Brian Cusco here at Triple B, and today on the channel we've got Dennis McNamara. And Dennis is going to talk to us about his background in zookeeping a little bit, and we're mostly going to look at the cool snakes that he produces, and I think it's going to be a good time. So thank you for tuning in. You'll be watching Triple B TV. The first time we met was at uh, Daytona. I think it was. Yeah, I think you videoed an olive python. Yes. Yes. Y yeah, you had olive python. That, that was that was definitely it. Yeah. Let me ask you about your your name. Okay. Because you know it better than I do. Dennis and, McNamara. Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't know if it's just because I knew some folks. That, so it seems like that would be a name that would stem from um, uh, Ireland, <laughs> and or yeah, Ireland, not not Scotland. Scotland is M A C. Right. Um, but maybe it's just that I knew a lot of Japanese people that had the last name McNamara. Oh, Japanese people? Yeah. Huh. I don't know. My So my dad's side of family came from Ireland, and my mom's side of family came from Italy. So I'm half Italian, as you can... I don't know. The Italian part, I think, is a little bit more uh, strong <laughs> as far as things go. But so, yeah, so my, my great-grandfather came from Ireland in, like, 19... 13 or something like that. My grandparents from from Italy came in in like 1906 or something like that. It's always kind of a weird story. The, the Italian part I know more about. The Irish part I don't know as much about. Other than there's a song. You guys have your own McNamara there's, song? There's a, there's a McNamara band. There's like a, a song about like, my name is McNamara. I'm the leader of the band. So yeah, there's a, there's a whole song you can look up on. I play it for my kids. My kids like to jump around and they don't really sing to it, but they like to dance to it and whatever else. It's Sweet. kind of fun. That's awesome. Little but, name recognition is good for everybody, you know? Yeah. Plus, nobody can say it right. So, like, at my high school graduation, they say McNamara. They say, <laughs> which is always weird because the high school uh, secretary had the same last name as me. And I'm like, you work with somebody every day with the same last name. You can't pronounce my name right at my own graduation. But that's kind of well, how it I went. I figured it was relevant since it's part of the name of your, your business oh, okay. there. So Yeah, so I had a really hard time with the whole name of the business thing. Like, when we were younger, like Chad Hulker and Scott Crumbly, and we used to do a thing where we were crazy fools reptiles because we thought it was fun. And I was like, oh, I'm an adult. What do you do? And I was like, probably should just use my name. And then I was like, I just put my name on there. And then I had a friend do a logo. And I was like, this is what I'm thinking of. And then I was like, it's like I made my Instagram thing like DJM Reptiles. And I was like, it kind of works. That's my initials. But it's also my son and my wife both have J as their first initial. And my daughter and myself have D. So I'm like, it kind of works out in both ways. So we could have a little bit of both. So I don't know. I don't know that I did the best on the branding. But I just figured whenever you, like, if you know... I shouldn't say this, but like, if you're going to go to Canova, you're going, I'm going to go talk to Justin or you're going to go talk to whatever else you're like. So I was like, I'd rather be more of a personal experience. So I kind of thought I'd go with that a little bit. Okay. Plus I polled about 20 friends and said, what do I think? And they're like, you're overthinking it, which is what they tell me, whatever. <laughs> so. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Well, what, obviously this is your carpet python. Right. Um, and the first time I met you, we did, filmed an olive python. Right. Do you have a species that you work with? particularly or are you just kind of all over the place i have a little all over the place i'd say i think last time i counted i think i have like 20 species i have i like a lot of the laces stuff so i have olive pythons maclots i have two localities of maclots uh water pythons savu pythons and i've got jungles i've been i've had jungles since the 90s um that particular animal i've been breeding those lines since like 2007 just kind of like it's like third generation of like things around that actually has some python peat blood into it so i actually outcrossed some of the stuff i was doing with new blood to make that would you um, mind holding her so i can get some shots of my sure. other camera here you tamed her down while you're here yeah well i mean you know she took a couple pops at a few people on the walk over <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty you can't exciting really beat a jungle heart but it's just a nice looking snake it really i mean yeah and they're the black... showy like you walk in your room and they're sitting on a perch like, you know, if you, if you cage them, they're always, they very rarely do anything other than sit right in front of you. They're a good showpiece species. They can be a little feisty when they're little, but they get over it as they get bigger. Yeah, as they build more confidence and whatnot. I don't put a whole lot of uh, energy into handling them all the time. So I think with more handling, shoot, you made this one nice in about three minutes. Yeah, that's all it takes, right? You just get a little yeah. bit of confidence built up in them where 
they're not getting eaten. And then that girl that came to take a picture of right. me, that was pretty impressive. Well, right? she was, I and mean, she was a trooper too. Like little kids that struck at and don't care. Yeah, she's like, That's always, you know, nobody's afraid of these things till you tell them to be. You know, I think about that. Oh, I, don't that. I work in a zoo, <laughs> so I work in a zoo. I see people every day. If you watch kids in the zoo, every kid is not afraid until their parents scares them mm. or tells them not to see it or whatever else. Like, watch all the little kids. Okay, if you look okay, at like kids, fair, yes, kids, kids under five, kids are not afraid. Yeah, until yeah. they're like under, if they're like under five. No, like I'll t- my daughter who lives in a house with snakes likes snakes, and then I showed her a corn snake of all things, and it ended up like moving and it whipped, it moved, and its tail hit her in the cheek. From that down, she's like, I'm not a big fan. Like one little thing, and I was like, of all things, a corn snake <laughs> and the like, tail and the tail. <laughs> but like to this day, she's like, I don't really. She'll, she'll be like, I don't like that red one. Don't let anything with that red one. But like I have pictures of her with like some pied ball pythons that I had when I was when she was younger, and she's like, Why well, like that one? Because I have pictures of that one as a kid when she's five. So as a kid, but like I don't know. I think it's just one of those things. I think we teach them and they they learn things, and hopefully you can make them better. And some people are more just predisposed to it too. My son is like, I don't, it might be a boy or girl thing, but he's balls to the wall. Like he'll touch anything, he'll pick anything up. My wife sometimes is like, he needs a little bit more restraint, but he's just like he could. He just loves it. He just like. I want to go see the yellow snake. I want to go see the whatever else. He's like, he's two, so he, you know, he can't give you a whole lot, but he'll t- he knows which ones he wants to see, and he goes around and makes sure all the tubs are closed and makes sure all the whatever else, and like, it's kind of funny. He'll watch how you open stuff, so he'll take his hands and like, try to open the tub the same way you do. It's, you know, they're sponges. It's cool to see how like, you can mold them, totally. good or bad. Is this a business for you or a hobby? It is becoming a business. Okay. Um, I'm for... I, know, I went to my first Daytona, well, Orlando show in 1995. Oh. So I've been doing this for a long time and never really took it very seriously and never really like made any money. I just kind of like read a couple things and I had a lot of stuff, but didn't really like take it seriously. And over the last few years, I was like, I have children now. I'm kind of thinking that I have nine years left on my zoo career working for the city. And then if I can figure out how to do this and not have to do anything else and be home with my kids when they're teenagers, I think that's my plan at this point. Okay. So I have, in the last like year and a half, I've decided to make it a business. All right. That's a so, so long, long time as a uh, hobbyist. And then, yeah. <laughs> if I was only so, if, if, yeah. If I'd had a little better foresight a few years ago, I'd probably be in a little bit better spot as something that goes. But we do all right. I mean, I'd say, you know, my wife was able to quit work and stay home. She does some Rodan and Field stuff. And so she, so she does some stay at home network marketing. And between that and doing this and me working and whatever, it's like, we do pretty well. So the more we can be home and the more we can do stuff, I think it's better. Where are you zookeeper at? The Virginia Zoo in Norfolk, Virginia. I've been there for 21 years of my life. Wow. Yeah. So I'm the assistant curator at Reptiles there. That's awesome. So yeah, it's a great job because I get to, I have great staff. It's a cool place to work. I get to pick out the collection. I get to, you know, so it's a cool thing to do. And also, like, my job is basically to oversee the people and the animals and the building. And the, but we also get to do a lot of tours and educate kids and adults and do, like, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah, doing everything. that sounds great. So, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look at a couple of the other animals okay. you brought here on the table. Yeah. Do you want to go ball python or you want to go Honduran? Let's go ball python and finish on the Honduran. Okay. This is a blackhead clown just blackhead clown yeah so so as far as i know so i made i made five blackhead clowns this year from a few different females just so i did het uh, visuals and they all look different so it's kind of weird that the gene is very variable now could there be something else in there possibly i guess but i made some that are really black backed and then this one has like if you look at all this stuff on the sides and like i don't know i think to me it's i don't even know if you can make it better i mean i'm gonna try and make it better but like it's just super cool, like the way it kind of goes all around, and it's real busy. It's a neat looking snake, so I'm yeah, excited. The, dor- the dorsal pattern, the the, the little bro- all the broken up stuff that's happening in the back, is pretty sweet. So I decided to keep one of each. Uh, so the ones that are more black backed and the ones that are more broken like this. So I kept one of each just to see, because I figure you can kind of plug them around. Plus, I think about that, and I'm like, you know, if you add like Stranger or Black Pastel or Bra- you know, I don't. Although I saw Justin had one over there, but I couldn't get to see it. But he had a he had a blackhead chocolate over there, but I could I only saw the label. I couldn't. That place is like a madhouse over there. But yeah, um, yes. So I figured there's cool things you could do, but again, I don't even know if I want to make it any better. Fine. She's like, a good eater, isn't she? Yeah, she's a good eater. But 
Like it's it's just a cool looking snake. I really really like it. I'm actually I put it in a banana too because I really like the way banana looks with a lot of stuff. And so I think I think that the color is going to come out super cool with the banana. I kind of feel like it's going to be real real orangey, maybe some purple in there. And so I think it's going to be a real neat looking animal. Yeah, absolutely. Those those dark jeans work very well with banana. So I have a female that just actually had a pre lay shed the other day. So hopefully we'll get something out of that soon, and the odds will be good. Yeah, you can't go wrong with clown, in my opinion. Yeah. And I try to, like, I've pretty much made it so I'm just doing visual to head or visual to visual, trying to make no impossible heads in the world anymore because yeah. it's such a pain in the neck. But so my odds should be decent, I think. But yeah, look look at the tail on that. I don't even look. Like, I feel like every time I look at something, I see something else new with it. But, like, it's just cool the way it kind of floats on it. The floating tail. Like how this kind of, like, kind of comes down. I don't know. I think it's super neat. But I kind of feel like when you mix that with that, like, I just think that the combination is going to be really cool. Because if you take all that orange and put that, like, if that all becomes orange like that, and especially, I think some of it will stay, I would think, as it got older. I think it will end up just being a really cool combo. I mean, look, like, even just, like, the purples and the oranges in the head. This is a straight banana clown here. Yeah. So I made a lot of banana clowns. So I bought a lot of, uh, a chunk of stuff from Tom Burke before he passed away. And I'll say I make babies that seem like there might be something else in them. I don't know. I think he just had really nice stuff. But so, like, I'll make 10 of the same thing, and they don't all look the same. So I had two that hatched out like this. The other ones are nice, but they're just, like, I don't know. To me, this one's just pretty exceptional. I think it's just from a nice clown, or maybe it has, I don't know. I made yellow belly cl banana clowns in there that I didn't know. <laughs> like, I was just like, oh, I didn't know there was yellow belly in here. So, I mean, I don't see yellow belly in it, but... Yeah, I don't see yellow belly in that one. It's, it's but there's just, like, just really good color. Yeah, definitely. And it, it, all the, like you're saying, all that purple and all that dark stuff is just going to be, you work this project into that. Yeah, I just think it's going to be really nice. And there's, I mean, there's lots of ways to go with it, but that's one of the ones that, I don't know, for me, I've done really well with the banana clown stuff this year. I made quite a few banana enchi clowns, and they sold really well. And it's just such a pretty snake that, I don't know, I mean. It is. They're, they're gorgeous. And, that, you know, the, the key was to do female maker boys. So I made 15 banana clown girls, like, of sorts. So, like, it makes it a much more lucrative project to do it that way. Plus, it makes it so you can hold back more stuff because it's, you know, everybody loves all the banana clown boys. But if you make the girls, the girls kind of seem to be where it's at. The value is triple of a girl mm. compared to a boy on the banana clown, more or less. Yeah. Or better. Oh, yeah. With, or with quadruple. Four, four banana, certainly yeah. females are... Yeah, so it's like, it's just, you know, if you're going to do it, you might as well, you might as well use girl, female makers or get girls of it. Totally. Well, let's check out that, that, uh, that grand finale there. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> so I have paper towels for you just in case. It's fun. You're producing all kinds of stuff, man. Yeah, and all, I mean, and honestly, I made, like, doing Honduran stuff is so, I don't know, they're like living candy. Like, I just think these things are like, it's, that's what I look at when I think of them. I think it's like the it's like albinos are like candy corn. corn. Yeah. You know, they're, they're just so pretty and so vibrant and they stay that way as they get bigger. They eat really well. They, you know, they're kind of movie and they'll pee on you a little bit when they're little, but as they get older, they, they super chill. I guess he's going to try to eat me now. <laughs> <laughs> My dad is a huge fan of red colubrids. Oh, okay. It's like his favorite snake. So this, and then, I don't know, I posted a picture the other day, but I have blood red pied side corn snakes that a guy out near you, uh, crap, I should remember his name, but I, uh, it's one of those things I saw it online and was like, I have to have these, and so I'll make those this year too. They're freaking red with white blotches all down the side, and like, no, red colubrids are incredible. So I get it. And it's kind of one of those things, like, both of them, like, doing the corn snake thing and doing the hunter and thing, I didn't plan on it. I just saw one, I saw a picture and was like, can I just, what, what can I do? Okay, I need to have that in my house. And then the Hondurans was kind of one of those things that a friend of mine was selling an adult pair and he hadn't bred them yet. And I saw them was like, they're literally like candy. Like they're like four or five feet of candy. And so I was like, I just want to have that. And so what I do actually is because, you know, there's always the chain, my bottom tub on all my racks have colubrids in them. Makes sense. Because there's, like, no matter what I do, the temperature always is, like, a little bit different. So I never really like putting ball pythons or pythons in those bottom racks. Totally. I, I and, do the same thing, actually. And so, yeah, so I put colubrids in the bottom. And then I'm, like, it takes, like, these, I don't even hibernate them. I just let the cool, the thing. I actually found, for me, now I don't know if this works for everybody, 
But like I was hibernating them and I was getting clutches of like three, four eggs. I did it like that where they were just getting down. Like it gets like low 70s down there maybe. It might spike lower than that. But then all of a sudden my clutch size went to 10. So I'm like, I don't know if it was just timing or whatever else, but it's kind of one of those things that I was like, well, now that I did it, I'm not changing back. Like it, sure. it worked. My numbers went up. The snakes seemed like they were better. I still like, you know, I cycle them a little bit, like feeding wise. But I mean, how could you not want to look at this? Like really? And I like some of our friends will come over and if we don't have a whole lot of people in the snake room, but like we have certain friends that let in there and like, like if they see a big hunter, like that's what they want to touch. Plus it moves. You know, it's not like you put a ball python in a kid's hand. It's nice because that. Yes. But like you take one of these and you put it on somebody that can kind of cruise around. We go over their shoulder or go over there wherever else it might hold onto their arm just to interact with them a little bit more. It's not like, I know it tried to bite me, but like they don't do that when they get bigger. Right. So like it's just, a, it's kind of, I don't know, one of the more perfect snakes, I think. Certainly a good looking snake, man. It's one of those it. ones I could just put in my pocket and take back home with me too. <laughs> If you need it, you can have it. <laughs> well, is there anything you'd like to say to the, the people listening at home before we get out of here? I don't know. So, well, I mean, I know I like talking snakes. So people always, ask, I get lots of people ask me questions. I, I feel like I'm in a good spot as far as like I have the zoo side of life, seeing how like conservation works and how doing all things and being involved in things as well as the hobby part as well as the business part. So I've been doing it for a long time. I've seen ups and downs and rounds and abouts and I, you know, I like having seen it and met a lot of people doing it. So, I don't know. If you want to talk to me, talk to me. If you have questions, I'm all for it. If you want some good snakes, I think I have plenty of those. And hopefully I'll see you soon. Yeah. Awesome, Dennis. Thank you for your time, man. No problem. Thank you. I appreciate you coming over, dude. I appreciate you having me. Yeah. Big thank you to Dennis for coming over. And tonight, as we always do with our guests, we're going to have a Zoom call with Dennis. Uh, he's probably got some good answers for your questions that you might have about just about anything given his time in the hobby and his experience in, in zookeeping so we'd love to have you on for that call there's a link down in the description if you'd like to join us there and if you do we will see you there but if not well we'll at least see you next week right here on Shovel B TV and until then y'all take care that's a hell of a light it is <laughs> no it's okay if you're the most stressful thing in my life, I'll be okay. <laughs> I can so believe that. I've never spoken into a microphone like this. It feels so fancy. I'm glad they take care of you as far as getting a little spot. Is that how you work it? It's just like if Potter has extra space, they just give you a little space for it? Yeah, because I was planning to be at the Freedom Breeder booth, but there was no space.